we have our projectile that goes inside the sabo, right? And then you have these sub bases right here. It's hollow on the inside, just a cup. But basically that just sits right inside there like this. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Suburban Hunt 365. We are back at the range today. And today's video was actually yet another comment suggestion from Todd of Wyoming. Really beginning to like this guy. Really beginning to like this guy. So his comment was to try some of the sub bases on the Sabode rounds that we have. So basically what I did is I went online and I found some. Uh, this is uh, MMP Ballistic Base Sub Base. I'll show you guys a picture up close where I got that and I'll throw the link down in the description. But we're gonna go ahead and pick these up. We picked these up rather and we're gonna try them. So basically what we're gonna do today is we're going to be running the Pyrodex. We're gonna be running the 150 grains because this says for the heavier loads and that's kind of what Todd was saying too, was for the hot or heavy powder charges often results in poor accuracy. This is supposed to help with that. So we're looking for accuracy. We're also curious to see what kind of velocity increases we can get. Uh, now this is a 50 pack for 10 bucks. So not terrible depending on what kind of action we see with this guys. So again, we're gonna be running 150 grains of the Pyrodex uh, 50 grain pellets. And we are going to be using our standard plug is what we're gonna be using. So basically we're gonna have our plug set up. We're gonna have our powder set up. Then we're gonna have the bases. And now we've got a we've got four different projectiles that we're gonna to use today. And what I'm gonna be running is the X TPs, uh, the 240 grain. These actually shot pretty poorly out of my rifle, so I'm actually really looking forward to improved accuracy out of those guys. The Magnum MZs that we ran not too long ago, 250 grains. The Smackdown Carnivores, uh, well, those actually did pretty decent, so I'm really curious to see what kind of increase we get there. And then last but not least, we're gonna be running the FTX uh, board drivers by Hornaday at 290 grains. So basically what we're gonna be doing, we're also gonna be running the 209, where'd they go right here? The 209 primers are what we're gonna be pushing this with. So 209 primer, plug, powder, sub base, and then the projectile itself. We're gonna be running three round groups, one with the sub base and one without the sub base. We'll run the without first to give us a baseline of what we're looking at, and then we will clean the gun go back and then we'll run the sub bases and that way we'll have a direct comparison now all of these we've shot in previous videos but i want a direct comparison with and without that way we don't have to go back and search all these different videos you've got exactly what you need in one single video now we will be using uh standard targets at 100 yards so it is a 100 yard test that we're going to be doing I'm really curious to see how this is going to wind up. Uh, really excited to hopefully get an increased accuracy out of this and be able to start using these. Because I have, especially with these XPTs, there are so many of you guys that have commented about how awesome these are for you, but they just don't shoot well out of my rifle. So I'm really hoping that these bad boys are the answer I've been looking for. So without any further ado, let's go ahead. We are going to start out with these XPTs. Let's turn around and start putting lead down range. All right, guys, while I'm thinking about it in between shots, so we just got done shooting the XTPs uh, with the standard uh, without this sub base in it. But, uh, and we'll go down and get that target here in a second, but I just wanted to show you a close up real quick. So basically what we're looking at is we have our projectile that goes inside the Sabo, right? And then you have these sub bases right here. It's hollow on the inside, just a cup. But basically that just sits right inside there like this. So the idea is that this extra piece will help seal and keep all the pressure behind the projectile as it pushes it out the barrel. So that is what we're doing. We're basically shooting this guy right here out of the barrel. So let's go ahead and let's see what happens. All right, as you can see, I'm in the reloading room. We had a big group of people come out to the range as I was shooting this. So rather than try to talk over all their shots, we came back to the reloading room to break down these details. So what you're looking at is the XTP with no base under it. 
Uh, that came at a three and one quarter of an inch group. We have 1980, 2001, and 1624. That's going to give us an average of 1868. Uh, so that is our baseline without the uh, sub base in it. So let's go ahead and throw the sub base underneath it and let's see what happens. All right, guys, as you can tell, you're not seeing the shots. That's because I forgot to push record before shooting these shots. So with this group here, we're looking at a five and three quarters of an inch. So a quite a bit bigger group with these sub bases. Uh, let's see here. We got 2003, 1963, and 1946 uh, for an average of 1971. So we have a bigger group and we've got slightly faster velocities so as i've said in the past speed does not always mean accuracy so we've got a little bit of an increased velocity here but it was detrimental to our group so let's keep going and let's see if this trend continues let's go to the barnes magnum mz's and uh with no base and see what happens All right, well, that wasn't an awesome group. That group came in at four and three quarters of an inch. So without the base, we're looking at 1934, 1973, and 1943 for an average of 1950. Uh, so that is our baseline for the Magnum MZs. Let's go ahead and let's throw the sub base in there and see what happens. Well, wouldn't you know, guys, halfway through shooting the Magnum MZs, uh, I just got actually one round down range with the sub base. And I look over, and this is what I see. I have the mount that holds my camera onto the spotting scope has broken. So I've got some zip ties here. we fixing the redneck the hell out of this. The show must go on. Good gravy, that's even a bigger group than what we had before. So that group is a five and three quarter inch group, so exactly one inch bigger than what we just had. And let's look here, we've got 1927, 1946, 1957. So our velocities are actually a little bit slower with these Barnes Magnum MZs uh, than we had before. So with the XPTs, we saw an increase in velocity on average. With this one, we're kind of in the same spot. We had 1950 with, without the base, and we had 1943 with the base. Now, again, we are using 150 grains of pellets, so you do have that deviation there. So with the Barnes MZs, I'm going to say that there was no change in velocity because it's just too close to really make a uh, distinction between the two. Uh, but we also had a one-inch difference in the group. So... Not, not awesome for the Barnes MZs, but we're also seeing not a lot of difference either. So, all right, let's continue on. Let's go to the SmackDown Carnivores without the base. All right, so there again, we have a four and three quarter of an inch group. And we are looking at 1838, 1990, 1920 for an average of 1916. Okay, not an awesome group. Velocities are kind of on par with what we've seen. So let's go ahead and throw the sub base in there and let's see what happens. Holy crap. That does not like the sub base. Not even a little. Holy crap. That was an eight inch group. We had a four and three quarters. That now we got an eight. That that's that's pretty rough, man. That is pretty rough. Let's see here. We got 2020, 1945, and 1960 for an increased velocity average of 1975. So there again, guys, speed does not equal accuracy. So just because you can get it to go faster doesn't necessarily mean that that bullet's going to land where you want it to land. That is a huge, huge uptick uh, in the uh, in the in the group size there. So, but again, it is faster from what we've seen. All right, so let's get into the last one here. It's going to be the FTX by Hornaday. This is going to be without the base. Man, my gun loves those freaking FTXs, man. That is a one and a half inch group. 
at 100 yards, as I mentioned before. So let's look here. We've got 1957, 1945, and 1895 for an average of 1932. So an inch and a half, is that going to do better? I doubt it very seriously, but let's go ahead and let's put the base underneath it. See what happens. All right, so that group jumped up to a three and three quarters of an inch group. So again, a bigger group there. Uh, let's see, we got a velocities of 1836, 1936, and 1854 for an actual decrease on average of 1875. So we got a mixed bag of information from this. So let's go ahead and let's dig into the chart and see what information we can actually pull out of this. All right, so here, looking at our chart, we have the XTPs with an average of 1868 without the base and then with the base 1971. So we do have an increase of velocity there. Looking at the MAG-MZs, we have a 1950 and a 1943. So pretty much no change there at all. Then the SmackDowns went from 1916 to 1975. So we have an increase there. And then with the FTXs, we have a 1932 down to an 1875. So we have two increases, one decrease, and one didn't move. So that's pretty indefinitive as far as what type of data we can draw from that because 50% of the time it increased, one time it decreased, and the other time it didn't move. So it's hard to say what that what the velocity is going to do with your particular combo. So uh, what I like to look at here real quick is the standard deviation. So with the standard deviation for the XTPs, because we had that 2001 and then a 1624, we got a really large standard deviation of 211. Uh, but then with the base, we dropped down to 29.3. Then again, with the Barnes MZs, we go from a 20.42 down to a 15.18 with the sub base. So SmackDowns, we're looking at a 76.08 down to a 39.69. Again, and a much better standard deviation. And then with the FTXs, this is kind of where it goes weird on us. We had a 32.88 uh, up to a standard deviation of 53.30. All right, so final decision, DJ, would you use sub bases? And the answer is with pellets, no, I would not. Because the, the velocities really were inconsistent on what it was doing for us. The standard deviations, even though it did seem like it was trending towards improving our standard deviation, the one thing that matters, if you can't put the round on a target, then it's not going to matter anyway, and that is our groove sizes. The only thing that was consistent across all four shots today is that when we put those bases in there, we lost group accuracy. So I would definitely not be using these with a pellet. With the standard deviations increasing, or excuse me, with the standard deviations getting better, across three of the four, I could definitely see maybe using this with the loose powder. If you've got something that works really well, but you just want a little bit more consistency out of your shots, sure, give these things a shot, give them a try and see what you got there. But with pellets, I, I'm i just gonna say no. That's not something that I'm looking forward to using with those. All right, guys, if you guys have stuck with us this far, I cannot say thank you enough for being a part of what we're doing here on this channel. Tied in Wyoming, thank you so much for that comment that sparked this particular video. And the bases didn't do what I'd hoped they'd do when I first started this video, but that's why we do these tests is to see what's going to happen. Now, I do plan on doing another test with loose powders, uh, same setup, loose powder, base, Sabo, projectile, and then see how the loose powder reacts with the base compared to the pellets. Uh, so that'll be another video coming up. All right, guys, so if you haven't already, please do us a favor and hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, please throw those comments down below. As you can tell, they help drive this channel. Guys, from Suburban Hunt 365, I'm DJ. Catch you on the next one.